Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I'm Brad, here with Doug. Hey. Doug has Game Pass, Yay. which means let's click around and find some random shit. And it's got a lot I, of good random shit on there. It does. <laughs> and it's so much fun to just like give something 20 minutes and go, yes or no? Am I in or out? And what's going to hold me there? So yeah. the one you stumbled into is Echo Generation, yes. which I added to my list because I heard like, oh, it's kind of a short JRPG, like and JRPG, good, short, even better. Okay, I can yeah. give this a shot. I haven't tried it yet, but what was it that led you into this? And you ultimately finished it. So what broke past your 20 minute mark? To keep going yeah so i mean so the like the, there's two things that got me really interested in this game was like one was the art style that i just thought was like incredible and i'll talk a little bit about that later and then two was going how long to beat and i was like <laughs> six hours <laughs> and Hell the JRPG. Yes, six hours because <laughs> yeah. we've definitely talked in the past a few times about like we like there's like it's a rarity but short jrpgs are pretty cool and yes. to me the one that's always like the good short jrpg is the first south park game which is like eight hours long good jrpg um it's a little short. longer than that i feel like i feel like it's it might be, it's 10 to 15 I, it's eight, like 10 percent of the normal I, jrpg <laughs> i rush games and eight seems rushed to me <laughs> okay that's fair but i'm saying it's it's much shorter than a normal anyway. jrpg yeah um, six hours so yeah i did yeah so that's why i picked this one up i think that the art style i think is the first thing that's just so just striking about it but i think you asked like how do you get past the first 20 minutes and i think i got past the first 20 minutes through spite um <laughs> because I want to love this game so much. And I think that's what's made this game like just ultimately so frustrating to me that like if this game came out with Echo Generation Royale Edition, just like kind of Persona <laughs> did, where it's like, hey, we fixed some stuff. Like could be a 10 out of 10, like very easily. Um, just because I think the world building's really cool. They have a good inkling of maybe what the combat should be. But there's just some things in here that just like bug the shit out of me that I was like, that I just, I got a little lost. Um, but it does so many kind of unique things. And that's the thing, like, I'm going to go back and forth this whole time going like, love this, hate this, love this, hate this. At the <laughs> end, I'm like, it was all right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what those, that's what some yeah. games are. I feel like it's the, these are, these are the three good things. These are the three God awful things, but ultimately I enjoyed myself and that's really what matters. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out if I ultimately enjoy myself or I just like I just enjoy the experience because it, it is such a unique game that I think that like it definitely like I think people should give this one a try. Yeah. Uh, first of all, because I did not know this going into this, but this game is part of my favorite type of fake genre that I've made up called chore venture games. Um, <laughs> and there's like two chore venture games that I know I'm aware of: The Tourist, which came out fairly recently, yep. which is a very cool game, um, and this other game called Tomba. And what a chore adventure game is, is basically you just get a bunch of weird little random side quests. There's kind of like an inkling of a larger story, but most of the time you're doing these like little tiny side quests um, for folks um, that'll have like their own like kind of like little micro stories, uh, which is very fun. And they're usually pretty non-linear, so you can kind of go out and just do all these different quests and, and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. And that's what this game is. So you have this, you have this sort of open, the game starts in a Canadian suburb, um, and there's just little mysteries going around town. And there's one of the problems I actually had with the game is that there's no setup to a, a larger story. There's just these little stories that are kind of going around town, which is, can be kind of cool. It's just like an idea like, hey, you kind of go here, you do this little story. You go and go yeah. over here, you do this little story. Um, but the stories are just so random and over so quickly that you don't get really anything to really chew on. Um, so kind of the setup for this game is... So like I said, it takes place in a Canadian su uh, suburb. You are, you're a stranger's thing, kid. I'll just say that. It just, that just makes, that hopefully that explains a lot of things that, here. <laughs> I think, I think that's a pair, that's a becoming an archetype of lead character at this point is kid from stranger things. And I was like, oh yeah, so kind of nerdy, but kind of still cool. But yeah, mm -hmm. there's, there's a cast of kid characters and then there's weird things going around in town. Yeah. Um. And so what you're doing is as you're going through the game, you're kind of exploring these weird things that are going around a town. And the weird things that are going around in town is everything, which is kind of fun because it's like, are there killer robots in this game? Yes. Are there zombies? Yes. Are there aliens? Are there this? It's just like every kind of fun little kid venture thing is mm -hmm. in this. Um, and but so no you go line? Is that what you're saying? Like there's no through line? No, there's there's not a real good through line. It's they just, kind of have 
it's just like I went to the grocery store and there were zombies and then I went to like school and there were robots and then I like went home and there was a vampire. Yes. And okay. that's that's one of the big that's one of the big problems I have with this game is there kind of is an overarching story, but but it's you kind of feel like you're almost like interrupted by these little stories to the point to the point you're trying to figure out what the overarching plot is. Mm-hmm. It's like is is this game just going around and finding these little these little stories, which would be neat. But the problem I had with these kind of little stories is that they are over so quickly that, like, for example, um, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's a graveyard that you kind of stumble upon, and you meet a woman, a ghost at a graveyard who's crying for her dead cat. And her dead cat can't move on because there's an evil dog catcher in the graveyard, and you have to go stop the evil dog catcher. Okay, okay. whatever. Kind of fun. Kind of fun idea. The dog catcher is two feet away. And then you fight the god catcher, and then that was the story's over. <laughs> it's not like so. There's not like there's no within these like little microcosm stories. It doesn't feel like there's any arcs. Things just kind of happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of fun saying the things that happen. It's like I fought a ghost goat, like a, a ghost dog catcher in a graveyard, and then fought a zombie right after. Um, which they're just fun ideas that are yep. there, but there there's no congealingness to it. Um, the gameplay itself is, I'm like trying not to be mean about it. Cause I think more people should play this game. I, the JRPG mechanics are just, they're not good. They're bad. And I think the, so you told me this yeah. before and my first yeah. reaction was it's turn-based, right? Yes. And then my reaction after that was how, <laughs> like, how do you, like, what is, what, what is wrong with the, like the turn-based mechanics? Cause like, it's, even yeah. if you just go attack magic defend like items it, it's i i don't and i and this, here's the thing that's like a little bit weird and i don't know why this happens so i'll just so for example the, the jrpg battles i will say like the monster designs are super fucking cool when you get to a boss battle there's really cool animations it just look looks awesome our team did mm-hmm. a killer job in this game um the problem is is that every battle felt exactly the same there's no so like there's no weaknesses of enemies there's one maybe two different um like status elements that work exactly the same one is poison and one is bleed they both do one damage they do the exact they're the exact they're literally the exact same thing um and then maybe one sort of interrupt thing um but what is with each attack you do sort of a a a, uh uh, a mario rpg thing where like oh you got to press the button at the right time or or do the sequences so that's kind of fun but the actual battle themselves, it you, all the bosses play exactly the same. There's no unique boss. They do, they do like one big attack, and as long as you can figure out how to dodge the attack by hitting block at the right time, then you're golden. And they'll have three. They'll maybe have like three attacks. You'll block those, and then you just throw whatever skills out there you so, need. Yeah. Is the so the issue is more simplicity more than bad? Like it's not like it's broken. It's just like there's just not much to it. Like literally every battle feels exactly the same. Like I, mean, I use the JRPG. exact same strategy. I love JRPGs no. and like <laughs> that's no, no, no. Because because even the bosses in a JRPG be like, okay, here I kind of have to know the mechanics like a little bit. Yes. Like okay, yes, this yes, is yes, yes. even if something simple is like a fire boss, like I should use ice attacks. Like not even that level. It's like there's just nothing. It's Are like you you. you it it was. I, Are you I think evolving the thing skills that, though? Like, are you gaining skills as you go? Like, is it just like, you know what I mean? Like does poison come in halfway through does like or is it just like here's your front loaded like because i guess in my mind like if it's only six hours like think of it like a six hours in a jrpg like you're lucky if you're out of the tutorial that's fair but what i'd say is like the toolbox is like your skills are so similar that there's you don't you're not even really getting skills you're not really getting a toolbox of skills because your your thing does 25 damage or does 25 damage with bleed so you're just why would i do anything else besides the 25 damage with bleed? Oh, there's gotcha. no reason so, to do anything yeah. else with it it's like this is the only option essentially of doing this one and like just how like the, the costs of things work like this costs three mana points or whatever for each for whatever turn yeah there's just clearly the right choice and there's no reason to ever use any move except gotcha. for that one for like okay. each character and then and then because the bot because there isn't any like deeper mechanics of like bosses could do a cool unique things like stun your characters or anything like nothing like that no aoe attacks so you can't attack more than one one enemy yep. at a time so it's uh, just it's so bare bones um 
to the point where I'm like, what, this didn't even necessarily be a JRPG. Like, just do something crazy for each boss battle. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be JRPG mechanics. You could, I don't know, just have something different for, I know, the, but I, I'm sure it came down to, you know, just the, it's an indie game sort of thing. Yeah, say team budget, um, time, et cetera. Yeah, and it was really disappointing because the game does a lot of cool things. So I, I guess just kind of get that out of the way. Um, some of the, some of the, well, the other, the other frustrating part, it's hard to start. <laughs> there's so many frustrating things with the game. So what, how, how you move forward in the game, and this is kind of where it makes things seem a little bit more random, is that there's just characters in your neighborhood who need items, but you're never given a hint of how to get those items. You just mm -hmm. end up getting those items somewhere else, totally yeah. random. So like, oh, I did the dog graveyard and I got this item. It's like, okay, well, I didn't know this item was here, but I guess I'll go give it to that guy. So yeah. you never know where to go. You just know that you have a laundry list of 10 people need 10 different items. I have no idea where these items are. There's no hints. They just need them. So you just like kind of randomly find those items. So there's no real sense of, I'm going to do this guy's mission. Okay, I know that he wants these things and they're over here somewhere. So I'm going to go explore that area. It's just, I was exploring this area. I found this random thing. It's like, I guess this is where I give this this guy now. And sometimes those things are like dead ends. Like it'll just be like a new ability. It's like, well, shit. Okay, that's not that wasn't the thing just to make the story go forward. Okay, who's the guy who needs the thing who to actually move the story forward? So you just feel like you're um, stumbling into answers. Yes, and so you're stumbling into plots. You're stumbling into moving the yeah. Just, you're stumbling into like moving the plot forward. So you're never quite sure what is and what isn't going to move the plot forward, yeah. which is just really frustrating. I will talk about some of the cool ideas that I had though. Uh, some of the fun stuff that I thought was kind of unique is that you don't when you level up you don't earn skills by leveling up. You earn skills by finding them in the environment. So okay. like your collectibles are skills. Okay. So it's kind of, so it is kind of fun, like doing like a little mission and then you earn a skill at the end or like you just find a skill randomly on the ground somewhere because they're comic books and they, 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 they read the comic books and that's how they get their skills. So no um, grinding. <laughs> there, there is grinding. This, this, that's why I'm just saying this game's insane. <laughs> I was, trying to, I was trying to go positive, like, oh, no grinding. And like, oh, no, never mind. No, there is grinding. And that's the thing. It's just like, it's it's a game that just mechanically feels not there yet. It's like, but like the setting is cool. The characters are kind of interesting. There's, But it just it just seems like a lot of people like threw in a bunch of ideas, but there's just not a lot of cohesion to it. And they're like, okay, well, maybe we can just kind of tie everything together with this battle system. But the battle system isn't quite there. And I'm trying to figure out like why I kept going through this game. And honestly, I think it's just so good looking <laughs> that it was just kind of, it was kind of neat. Like, just like, just when you, it's like, and, and the thing is like the stories are so separated from each other um, that you really don't know what like the next thing is going to, is going to be. Um, so like, so the cool aspects, like kind of spoiler stuff was like, oh, I was not expecting that here. Um, there's just a random blood, bloodborne boss for some reason, just like, <laughs> just straight out of bloodborne like even <laughs> even carries a sock lever i was like oh that's kind of fun um so it's fun when you kind of do these like random adventures again the art direction is like really really cool um it's a little funny the world's like a little off kilter like you can yeah. talk to animals but it's not seen as a big deal like you can just talk like everybody can kind of talk to animals mm -hmm. um and there's like raccoons who are kind of jerks and, and that kind of thing and there's a um an evil something that just wants puppets from you to like rule the planet with puppets and it's just like it's like just fun like little quirky characters <laughs> yeah. and that kind of thing i think so, that was ultimately so yeah that's what drove you forward is that it's that it's that fun element of surprise of who knows what this is going to do next which i think is i think that's a good yeah. driving force of going like especially when the art design is good and when the characters that you're seeing are interesting yeah. is going like i will keep dealing with this because i you have already reassured me that the next thing i'm going to see will be interesting and or cool and that's enough to propel yeah. me to do the next little, especially if they're like, if they're that short of little like vignette stories. Yeah. It's really easy just to hop into the next one. And it almost sounds like one of those things where you just lose track of like, oh, I did like three quests. Oh, it's only, yeah. I guess I can do seven more because it's only been 20 minutes. Yeah. And, and yes. And that is, that is true. It's like just the neat, the neat little surprises between each one um, was really cool. I just think that. I wish the gameplay was as surprising as the rest of the game. Yeah. Like it, the ga the other game is just like so unique and cool. And it just like has this like very, this like quiet undertone of just bad gameplay throughout, which sucks. But like when you're running around and talking with characters, that part's great. But as soon as you enter a battle, it's just like, shit, how, okay, I want to get this over with. Like click, <laughs> click, click. Mad the thing facts. is the battles aren't even, they're not even easy. Like the char the characters do like a ton of damage. So like you'll just, if you die in battle, you come back with half your health. 
but then you just need to run back to your house to like heal up because you're just never going to beat the boss if you don't have full health yeah Yeah, so that's what i'm saying there is like a grinding aspect to it as well it's just like I, i don't know i don't know why um why i don't know why the gameplay the, the specifically the battles are so broken in this game when the rest of the game is just like so freaking cool yeah. um yeah but i recommend trying it i recommend trying it i think like everybody should at least just pop this game open just to see what it looks like because it just looks wholly unique that was one thing i didn't really talk about um it uses something called voxels which are essentially instead of pixels think of just a 3d cube so everything's made out of like small cubes um so like legos you could say like Legos if you want to be pedantic, <laughs> <laughs> but it's they're but they're like they're little cubes. But the thing that's really cool about when you have a bunch of little cubes together is that you can put two D and three D next to each other and they mix really, really, really well. Um, mm-hmm. So there's a lot of cool like mix. It reminds me of old PlayStation games where like nice. oh you ever like when two D and three D mix really nicely. Yeah. It's one of those kind of things. Um, and it's got like some Earthbound vibes and that sort of thing. There's there's stuff here to like for sure. Um, and I think that there's a lot of unique stuff just maybe worth pushing through, but God, like I, I could, re- I could actually see this game getting like an echo generations plus version or something. That's like, we can, we wanted to fix some of these aspects and add in 10 new skills, change the leveling yeah. system, that type of, yeah, yeah exa- exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a good game pass game where it's just like a man, just check it out. Like it's yeah. going to, it's going to be somebody's thing. If it's not yours, it's going to be somebody's thing. I think that's what game pass. Is oh, like sure. It's like, there are so many of these games that like, not for everybody, but this is going to be somebody's thing for sure. Yeah, and it's and it's almost my thing. <laughs> it so, has so many things that I like, but it, and it's just like just a little bit more. Yeah. Yep. We are Workforce Gaming. You can follow us on Twitter at Workforce Gaming. Subscribe to us wherever you're listening, and we will see you later. Bye.